Hi, welcome to High Road. My name is Andrew, and today I'm going to be unboxing all the tools that I'm going to need to make my first guitar. So, I have been researching and ordering packages for over the last six months, and I haven't opened any of them. Can you imagine how I'm feeling right now? I'm, all these have been arriving on my doorstep for months, and I haven't even touched any of them. So, this is a, a little pile from Crimson Guitars. This is a pile from Stu Mac. This is a pile from various internet um, online providers. And I've got a few other tools I've bought uh, just around where I live locally. So I'm going to open all these right now and you're going to see every single tool that I'm going to need to build my first guitar. We're going to start with the Crimson Guitars packages first. Oh, very nice. So you attach adhesive sandpaper to that and you can double press. So that's pretty nice. This is my next box from Crimson. So, let me see if I can remember what all this is. These are um, fret buffing rubbers. And I've got medium and super fine. And that is a file cleaning brush, I believe. Oh, truss rods. So these ones are a little bit different from Stu Mac in that they're metric. So I think you cut a six millimeter truss rod channel for these ones. A set of feeler gauges. These are all metric size. Oh no, they're both imperial and metric sizes and they've got nice little, I can feel they've got an oil film between them to keep them protected. Yeah, so those are fret pullers. Let's say I'm building a guitar and I you know, need to pull a fret out and if, if I've done it wrong then I'm gonna need these. Ah, it's a fret rocker. Oh, it's for the guitar setup stage. Ah, cool. This is a fret leveling file, and you basically run this along a fretboard to level off all the frets. Now, I haven't decided if that's the way I want to level my frets. In fact, I think maybe, maybe I won't do it this way, but I wanted to buy this anyway in case I'm wrong. I wanted to have about three different options for leveling frets. And um, this is the one I always see Ben from Crimson using, so I figured if he, this one he uses, can't go wrong. This is a fairly important one. This is a Shinto saw rasp. This is what you see everyone using to file the wood off the back of the neck when you're carving the neck profile. Apparently these remove a lot of wood very fast and uh, you can really get a lot done with these before you start moving to finer tools. Now I should mention Crimson and Stumac both have lots of the same stuff um, at various prices and sometimes I just sort of took a guess and thought well it's probably the same thing if I buy it from like a, a scale ruler you'd think would be accurate from either one. I just kind of went with who had the cheapest option which for this was Crimson. Okay, so we've got a few different things here. This one is a string spacing rule. So you use these to actually mark out the um, the spacing of the strings on either the nut or the saddle. I wonder if I've accidentally ordered two of the same thing. This is a slotted straight edge. This is a uh, just a, a, a pure straight edge. So this would be used on a fretboard before you put the frets on. This is what you'd use after the frets are on. That is everything from Crimson. Thank you very much, Crimson. Okay, next on the list is stuff from Stumac. So, nut slot files in various sizes. And this is a, uh, sorry, a nut slot file. You use that to actually slot, uh, file down the little area where the nut is gonna be glued in. And it's exactly an eighth of an inch, which is usually what most blank nuts come in. Next Stumac package. Okay, these are various scrapers which you use um, just to make sure that the final surface of the guitar or the back of the neck or something is ultra smooth and you've um, gotten rid of all the tooling marks. This is a fret pressing call. You actually attach this to a drill press and you can press in frets. And this is a generic call and you, you actually put a brass insert on that for the radius that you want. We got here. Warning, extremely powerful magnets. Oh, those are powerful magnets. You use these for various things, but I'm going to use these to charge up the um, 
guitar pickups that I bought from Stu Mac. What have we got here? Oh yeah. <laughs> now I'll admit I bought way more than I needed to here. Um, I've actually bought a full complete, you know, with the ones I've already got here, I've got the full range of nut slotting files that you would ever need for every string gauge. I think including bass. I just wanted to get everything because um, you get a bulk discount and um, I'm pretty much set for life now. 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22. 22 different nut slot files there. That was a real big investment but I'm hoping that that pays off in the long run. That is the 12 inch fret press call that um, you use to press the frets in with. Hopefully you can see that. This is a little screw handle that goes with the magnets. Oh yeah, really tiny little delicate scrapers. Some of this stuff maybe I didn't need to buy, but I won't know until I start building. Pickups! This is the, these are actually um, Stu Mac branded tele pickups. And you might think, well, why would I get a Stu Mac brand of pickups, you know? Why wouldn't I get something made by Fender or Lola or Seymour Duncan or a proper branded pickup? But to me, like, a pickup's a pickup. If it's got the specifications that you want, if it's made from the right kind of magnets, it has the right um, impedance, it's going to sound the way you want. So I, I had listened to some sound samples online. I read the specs and I trust that this is going to sound the way I want it to sound. Next box from Stumac. Right, this is a Ghost Acoustic uh, preamp. Uh, we'll talk about that later, but that's essentially uh, electronics for the guitar. This is a contour gauge, which I'm hoping will assist me uh, in carving the neck profile. You can buy these at hardware stores, but I thought this is probably a better one for making guitars. Those are Ghost replacement pickups, which uh, go with that little preamp. Now oh, that's interesting. They've actually given me extra fret press calls. I've actually now got two 12 inch ones, which I didn't need, but I've got a 20 inch and a 12 inch because th those are the two sanding beams that I've I've ordered. This is electronics uh, for the ghost system and those are side dots. So we run out of room here. Whew, what's all this? That is a scrunched up piece of paper. Oh, coil wire. So I am actually going to have a crack at making my own pickups. Um, I'm going to do some experimenting. I'm not sure how successful that's going to be, but I decided to buy some coil wire to do that with. And this is 43 gauge um, coil wire. We'll talk about that later too. Ooh, what's this? Oh, okay. So this is a, a Stu Max string spacing rule. I did already buy one of these from Crimson, but um, this is the Stu Mac version. Same thing. Pick guard for a telly. Uh, that is pickup uh, bobbin material, I think they call that. And this is um, a blank, some blank pick guard plastic. So I can make my own pick guards because I've, I've got some ideas. And lastly here I've got, it's a string retainer that you, uh, it's, it's a bit like a, a, a string tree, but it's a, a big long horizontal bar. Heaps of stuff in here. Ooh. Feeler gauges. And I did mention I'm thinking of making my own pickups. So that is a set of Tele bridge bobbins. That's a Tele control plate. That's a uh, battery box, which you can put inside the guitar body if you're out of cavity for it. That is pickup tape, pickup bobbin tape, control jack cover, neck pocket plate. Those are the tuners and telly, uh, I think they're called body ferrules or ferro. <laughs> How do you pronounce it? Fer ferrules, I think they're called. What are these? What are these? I ordered them. But what are they? I don't know what these are. Check the packing slip. Oh. Right, I think I know what they are. This is a safe slot tool. And I believe these are the pieces that actually slide into the tool. And you use this for um, cutting a, a nut on a guitar. Tele bridge plate. 
control knobs, various screws and string trees. Oh, these are pickup magnet poles, just three. You might think that's strange. That's because I have a strange idea planned for these. I only bought three of them. You'll see, you'll see. This one is an eyelet setting tool. Why did I buy that? Oh, that's for pickups. This one is all the tele electronic wiring gear that I'll be needing. Uh, I'm going with a four way switch design. Oh, and these are the eyelets. And those are blank nuts. One eighth of an inch standard sort of size. All right, next box. I really have gone to town now, haven't I? I am committed. Couldn't back out now if I wanted to. Alright, so what we have here is adhesive sandpaper which goes with the leveling beams. That is a fretting hammer, a dead blow hammer that you use to bang frets in. Now I know I've got a fret press core there, but I don't know if I'm going to like that or not. Maybe this is the way I'm going to decide is my preferred way to do it. I won't know until I've done both. Okay, I think these are also fret pullers. So these are the fret pullers I got from Crimson, and these are the ones I got from Stu Mac. Very different. <laughs> this <laughs> is a huge amount of stainless steel fret wire. This is jumbo fret wire, stainless steel, 52 feet of fret wire there. That is enough for like, <laughs> I'm not sure, I'm going to guess maybe 10 guitars, maybe more. Um, the reason I bought so much of it is that it's much cheaper when you buy it in a bulk pack and also fretting is something that I think I'm going to need to practice so I bought enough of it that I can do some practice work on that and still have heaps left over. A diamond rasp or a file. So these you can use them to um, when you're creating the neck contours. Fretting files. This one's a three corner fret file with the um, straight edges on each corner and this is a fret finishing file and then in there we've got some what do they call those? Chip guards? I think they're called chip guards that protect um, the fretboard while you're working on the frets. So these are a couple of Stumac fret rubbers. 1200 and 2000 grit, um, which is fine and really fine. So that's the Stumac version of these fret rubbers from uh, Crimson. I don't know which ones I'll prefer yet, so we'll see. I didn't realize it was so tiny. That is a fret slot radius, it's a depth gauge for um, fret slots. So you, you basically put that into your fret slot and then it tells you if you're deep enough because it's got the, a couple of little marked lines on there. These are super glue fine tips so you can put a little tiny dab of super glue right where you want it. These are some more feeler gauges. Cool, this is a high end thing. So this is a fret bender. You use this to actually bend the fret to the correct radius that you want. And it's just the kind of thing that if you're going to do this properly, you, you kind of just need to get the real deal, which this is quite expensive, but I'm hoping it's worth it and it gives me accurate results. Next box. Okay, more adhesive sandpaper. Now I've got five different grits of that. Ah. This is a dead blow pillow, which you can use to cradle a guitar neck in or any object really. And when you hit it with a, a hammer, it, um, it supports the neck as you hammer frets in. Okay, this is a fret saw, Japanese fret saw for cutting fret slots. Various different um, grades of super glue, different thicknesses. Some are thicker or thinner than others. Why would a fret cleaning saw have a cancer warning on it? That's pretty odd. There it is, cancer warning. Oh well. So this is for cleaning out fret slots. Jeepers, what is that? Oh, that's um, that's also for cleaning fret slots. It's a little scraper, and that's the handle that goes with it. So it's a 12-inch radius beam for various purposes. I'm probably going to use this um, for creating the f the fall away at the um, upper frets. <laughs> Another string spacing rule. Oh yeah, okay, so this is a fret scale ruler. 
and um, I believe it has four different sizes. It's got a classical 650 millimeters, classical 660 millimeters, and on the other side it's got a PRS Dobro and National 25 inch, and then the one that I want, the Fender 25 and a half inch just there. And this is 25 and a half inch fret slotting jig which goes with, I'm assuming this is a fret slotting miter box. So I believe this slots, or well these two go together essentially, and this lines up with little pins inside the miter box, and um, you slide that along to, to get perfect frets. Man, I've dropped a lot of money here, haven't I? That's cool. That's all of the Stumac and Crimson stuff. Okay, let's start going through stuff that is not from Stumac. This one is a fretboard leveling beam. A really long one. It's it's quite long. It's about 550 millimeters or something. 55 centimeters. And uh, it's got 12 inch radius on one side, which is what I want. And it's got a uh, 20 inch radius on the other side, which is sort of just a, a bonus, really. Oh, it's called Best Parts. How can you go wrong when you've bought the best parts? That looks pretty great. Oh, look at that. That is really fine quality, I think. So, from what I understand, it's 12 inch on one side, 20 on the other, and the edges can be used as fret leveling beams if you want. God, I hope this isn't a waste of money. Um, this, I believe, is a digital magnometer. You essentially use this to measure the strength of magnets. Now the reason I bought this is, again, it's for my pickup experimenting. Um, I'm, I've got a guitar that I really like, and I love the pickups that are in it, but they don't have a brand on them. I've got no idea what they are or what their specifications are. And I bought this so that I can test the strength of the magnetic poles on those guitar pickups, um, so that I can then hopefully replicate those and make my own. So this is a piece of test equipment I'm going to use to help me copy my favourite pickups. I, I can't even remember buying half this stuff. I'm sure past Andrew knew what he was doing. What on earth are these? Oh yeah, right, okay. <laughs> these are those little... Um, you buy these on Amazon or eBay. It's just like a multi-pack of various different guitar tools. Kind of cheap stuff that you know could be handy. It's very cheap, it's about 20 bucks for a pack. These are radius gauges, understring radius gauges. Uh, that's a little string action ruler. Stumac makes these as well, but you know, these are so cheap I thought I'll give it a try. That is, I think it's like a fret rubber. And these are more feeler gauges. And inside this pack, probably the same. Yeah, I actually bought two of them. Why did I do that? Probably because I wanted. I, I just feel like I'm going to go through feeler gauges if I start filing nuts down. What is this? Ah, oh, yeah, okay. These are vintage spaced saddles from a brand in the UK called Callahan Guitars. So this is essentially a hardtail fender bridge. But the string spacing is much wider than a normal Fender bridge because this is why I'm building my own guitar because I want a electric guitar that has the same string spacing and neck dimensions as my acoustic guitar. So this is a Fender style bridge that lets me have an acoustic spacing. Oh yeah, I bought these off Amazon as well. These are little string, uh, what do they call them? I think they're called string spreaders, that's what they're called. These are glow in the dark side dots. I don't know if you can see this. That little plastic rod is the entire thing. So you basically drill a hole, insert a little bit of that rod and um, glue it in and then you cut it off. And this should be enough for probably two guitar necks. So there it is. That is all of the tools I have bought. Well, maybe not Stanley Knife. That was mine that I bought from Stumac and Crimson and various online retailers to build my first guitar. Maybe a couple of guitars actually. So uh, I'm not going to explain how much all this cost, but as you can guess, a couple of thousand dollars for all these. These are quality tools as well. I don't want to muck around. I don't have to buy things again. 
and um, I don't want to have to be delayed by not having the right tools. So this is everything I'm hoping I'll need. Actually, it's not quite everything because I haven't shown you the wood that I purchased and a couple of big power tools and various things. So let me let me show you a bit more. Okay, so I've made some room here because I did buy more tools um, locally. Um, some of these are guitar specific, some of them aren't. So the first thing I bought was um, some measuring equipment. So this is a, a digital angle gauge and um, that's a digital caliper. Uh, these are quite cheap but I've, as it turns out they're quite accurate. Um, some Forstner bits Drill, basically these are drill bits that, that you can use to hog out lots of material at once if you're routing out cavities. These are, I think these are called French French curves. You buy these at um, office works and places like that. They're basically a whole bunch of plastic curve templates that you can use to um, do shape design with. And that is a flexible French curve. Pencils, X-Acto knife protractor, a bunch of metal rulers which can be quite handy, and another smaller protractor. Oh, and a pencil sharpener. A teensy tiny little metal ruler, a um, analog protractor with a, um, a ruler attached so that you can... This is all for design when you're making guitar templates and that sort of stuff. More feeler gauges. Flush trim bit, it's a router bit. I believe this is a 3 8 diameter, another router bit. This one is a pattern bit, half inch, so 12.7 millimeters. That's for um, taking out quite a bit of material at once. And this is a, a flush trim bit. These are just some spare bearings for those router bits. This is an interesting one. Um, <laughs> I've seen on Stu Mac videos, they use these. Um, Headband magnifiers quite a lot. My eyesight's fine, but you know, I just think this might be quite handy. Now this is really cool. I saw this on a Crimson video. This is polymorph, sometimes called thermoresin. And you heat this up to about 60 degrees and it melts and you can mold your own plastic parts with this. So I'm gonna use this to actually create a neck contour profile of my acoustic guitar and try and match that so I can copy an existing guitar neck and, and make it exactly the same. Now if you've watched any Stu Mac tutorial videos you'll have seen almost this exact kind of vise being used in all those videos. Oh gee it's heavy. Um, there's really nothing you can buy like this at a hardware store because the the jaws of the vise actually swivel and move and they change and when you're working with a guitar neck which has an angle to it where it goes from narrow through to wide at, at the other end, you have to have jaws that can move and swivel so that they can grip that shape um, if you want it to stay stable. Now this has also got um, softer wooden jaws and they've got a polyurethane lining so it doesn't damage the workpiece. Stumac sell these but I was able to find one in Brisbane, it's, it's essentially identical, there's no really no difference and it was um, quite a bit cheaper for me to buy it locally. That is a pretty big investment but you know, from what I can tell once you've got one of these, like, it just changes your life. <laughs> That's almost all the tools. I did buy one big power tool, which I'm going to show you in a moment. But next thing is the wood. Now, there's a place at the Sunshine Coast here in, uh, near Brisbane, where I live, that sells guitar timbers. It's actually guitartimbers.com. Um, and I will be doing a video on them at some stage in the future. But I went up there and I bought a whole series of um, guitar timbers for me to use for the necks and the bodies. And I am a bit of a traditionalist. I, I, I think the traditional woods that they make fender guitars from are the ones that you should stick to, but I'm not really making a traditional guitar, so I, I went a little bit non-traditional here. Now, this top piece, I actually don't know what type of wood this is. I asked if I could get a piece of scrap wood so I could practice my fretting skills. So this piece of wood on top is actually a practice piece. It looks a bit like mahogany or something, but it's um, I'm basically going to practice my 
my fret slotting skills with this. And then I've got two pieces of ebony and two pieces of Queensland maple because that is what I have on my acoustic guitar. It's a Maton and I've got ebony fretboard and I've got Queensland maple neck. So I thought, well, I want to look down at the fretboard and see the same thing as what I'm used to with my acoustic guitar. It's some type of ebony. It's actually got a bit of a brown tinge to it. It's almost rosewoody. Um, but that's Queensland maple, which is really stable in our humid environment. So that's going to be my neck woods and my body blanks. I have a large piece of Queensland maple that's been properly joined and a slightly smaller piece. Uh, I've got enough here to make two guitars with. So I've invested a little bit more than I needed to for my first guitar, but, but considering I will be making more guitars, I think that's okay. And again, this is Queensland maple, which is the same wood that my acoustic guitar is made from. All right, so now I promise this really is everything I need to make my first guitar. Actually, my first couple of guitars. So these are the tools I bought in Brisbane. These are the tone, the neck wood and the body blanks. Mostly Stumac tools and materials and crimson. And there's a bit of online stuff there as well. So much stuff. Except I kind of lied. There is one more thing I bought. And that is just down there. This is an oscillating spindle sander. Uh, it was the only power tool I thought I really had to buy specifically because what this can do, there's really no other tool that can do this. So let's open it up. So essentially the spindle goes on there with sandpaper around it, switch it on and you can um, shape guitar parts on that. comes with um, various grits and radiuses of sandpaper and all the various bits and pieces that go with it. So <laughs> that really is everything. Seeing all these tools and all this material laid out in front of me like this, it, it's, it's pretty exciting but it's also quite daunting and um, I have to remind myself I've never done this before but you have to start somewhere and unless you have all this stuff you can't start so this is really the only way to go if you want to build your own guitars if you want to do it properly the first time around and not screw around this is kind of what you've got to do I probably could have saved I don't know maybe a third of the cost if I just really bought only the absolute necess necessities but I think to do that you have to have a lot of experience to know what you'll need and what you don't need I don't have that experience yet so <laughs> this is kind of what I have to do this is the process I've, I've chosen um, to be thorough and to make sure I've covered all my bases and I won't be left stranded needing a tool or a part or a component that I hadn't thought of wish me luck and I hope you enjoy watching the process of me building my first guitar and making lots of mistakes along the way so that you can learn and save yourself from the trouble. See you soon.